Praise the Lord. Greetings to you all in the matchless and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today, I would like to talk about a king named David in the Bible. We all know that Saul has been chosen to be the first king over God's people, Israel. But Saul disobeyed God and that's the reason God chose David after King Saul to be the king over Israel. And in Acts chapter 13 verse 22, we see that God has given a great testimony about King David. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. What a blessedness to receive this great testimony from Almighty God. So many times we share testimony about our own life. We share about what we are and sometimes we exaggerate certain things. But when God gives testimony about a certain person, there's absolutely no exaggeration. And because David received a great testimony from God that he is after God's own heart, we have to carefully observe the qualities in David's life which made him to receive this great testimony from God. God said that David knew my will, David knew my heart, David understood my purposes and that is why he is a man after my own heart. Today, I would like to talk about seven points from David's life that we need to observe and we need to make them a part of our lives so that we can be people after God's own heart. In the Bible, we see that David started his life as a shepherd boy. David's father, Jesse, had seven sons and David is the youngest of all. He took care of his father's sheep. And one day, when David was watching over his father's sheep in the forest, a lion and a bear came to attack the sheep. And David protected the sheep from the mouth of the lion and the bear. If you and I were in David's place, what would we do? If there's a ferocious animal like a lion or a bear, we would try to save our lives and run away. But that was not the case in David's life. Even though David had a big challenge right in front of him, David risked his own life to protect the lives of the little sheep. In 1 Samuel chapter 17 verses 34 through 36, we see that David shared his experience with King Saul. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. David had this wonderful track record. He was faithful as a little shepherd boy. That is why faithfulness in small things is a big thing. I'm sure God must have thought, because David is faithful in taking care of his sheep, he will surely be a good king over my people Israel and he will take good care of them. My dear brothers and sisters, don't be disappointed and discouraged when you have to wait to receive your blessings. God is watching everything that you're doing. He's hearing all your prayers. He is waiting to answer your prayers and believe that your answer is on the way. Your blessing is on the way. God is watching your life. In order for David to become the king over Israel, even though David was anointed when he was a little boy, he had to wait until he was 30 years old. But David waited for God's timing in his life. The first point that we need to remember in David's life is this. When faced with a challenge, David did not try to escape. I know so many young people when they have to write the exams, when they need to face an interview, they want to escape. They don't want to face the examination because they're afraid. But the Bible says that David was courageous. He faced the challenge with courage and he did not run away. Here's the second point why God said that David is a man after his own heart. There was a big battle happening between the Israelites and the Philistines in the valley of Elah. And this giant named Goliath, who was over nine feet tall, was standing in front of the Israelites and the people were frightened and scared. Nobody wanted to face him. And we see that David made a big statement of faith before he went and faced Goliath. In 1 Samuel chapter 17 verses 4 through 8, we see a description about Goliath and the armor that he was wearing. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had an helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. 
and weight of the coat was five thousand shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs, and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. And his spear's head weighted six hundred shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel, and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? I am not I a Philistine, and ye servants of Saul? Choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. Goliath was a giant. He had a huge personality. And Goliath was wearing a great armor. Goliath was all prepared to face the battle, to conquer his enemies. I'm sure all the Israelites were scared looking at this man's height and weight and the armor that he was wearing and everything. But David did not look at the size of the enemy. He looked at the size of his God. Hallelujah. You and I serve a living God. And remember that your God and my God is greater than the enemy. The Bible says that we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And the Bible also says that he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. When you are faced with challenges and difficulties, when the enemy tries to attack you in your life, don't ever look at your problem. Don't try to meditate on your problem. Don't look at the dimensions of your problem. Look at your God who can solve all your problems and who can give you victory in all aspects of your life. The second point that we need to learn from David's life is this. David did not look at the size of the enemy. David had big faith in a big God. The Bible says, if you have faith, you can move mountains. Yes. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. When David went to meet his brothers in the valley of Elah, he observed everything that was happening. He was observing the reactions of people. He observed what his brothers were talking about, this giant Goliath. Let's read a few verses from the word of God about how the people reacted. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 11, the Bible says, The people were dismayed and terrified. In 13th verse, the Bible says, David's three older brothers were already in battle, but they were scared, they were afraid, they were not bold enough to face this giant Goliath. In verse 24, we see that the people fled in great fear. People ran away to save their lives. In verse 28, we see that when David went to his oldest brother Eliab, his brother was so angry and he totally disappointed David. And finally in verse 33, when David went to King Saul and said, My king, I would like to go and fight this man in the battle. Saul also discouraged him. But let me tell you something. This is the third point that we need to learn from David's life. David was not influenced by the people and the circumstances around him. So many times in life, we try to go by mob mentality. If everybody around you is scared, you get scared. When everybody around us try to do something, we try to do the same thing. But David was not influenced by the people around him, by the words they have spoken or by their reactions. Finally, King Saul permits David to go and fight Goliath in the battle. So David goes and faces Goliath. And look at the statements that Goliath made when he saw David. 1 Samuel chapter 17 verses 44 and 45 And the Philistines said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Goliath had a giant personality. His personality itself scared so many Israelites. And David is not trained for war at all. He is only a little shepherd boy, much younger than his brothers. Yet, when David faced Goliath and Goliath made all these statements to scare David to the core, David was determined to the fullest extent and he said, I will surely fight the battle and win. The fourth point that we need to observe in David's life is this. He was not afraid. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 that God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power, love and sound mind. I know so many times we are gripped with fear in our life. Fear about future, fear about finances, fear about health, fear about your education, fear about your career, fear about what will happen tomorrow. 
But the Bible says, when you have God with you in your life, you don't have to be afraid because God has promised that he will be with us. David was not afraid to face the enemy in the battlefield. And finally, in verse 49, we see how David defeated this giant Goliath. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead. And the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. Imagine fighting a giant, killing a giant with just a single simple stone. What is the secret behind David's success? The secret behind David's success is his God. Usually if someone has to fight a battle and win, sword is the minimum weapon that is required. But without any armor, without any weapon, David could kill Goliath just with a sling and a stone. David put his faith in the extraordinary God. David put faith in this big God who can give him extraordinary victory. After David won against this Philistine in the battle, he became popular. He was the talk of the town. Everybody started talking about David and all the people sang to David and said, they sang 10,000 praises to David and 1,000 praises to King Saul. Now David has become a celebrity. The fifth point that we need to remember from David's life is this. After God has exalted him, taken him out of the sheep pen to be a king of Israel, David always remembered his roots. In 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 18, David said this. Then went King David in and sat before the Lord and he said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is my house that thou hast brought me hitherto? Who am I that you have brought me so far? David never forgot his beginning. David was not proud. He had this attitude of gratitude. He was always thankful. Even in Psalm 103, David says to his own soul, Forget not the benefits of God. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And we also see in Psalm chapter 23, the last verse, David says, And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Even though David can rejoice about being in his palace, in his beautiful palace which he has built for himself, David realized that it is a great blessing to be in the presence of God, in the house of God, than to be in his palace. David said, Who am I, Lord, that you remembered me and brought me thus far? And also, when the ark of the Lord was brought into Jerusalem, we see that David danced in the presence of God. And Saul's daughter, Michal, who was David's wife, saw him from a distance through a window and she despised David in her heart. And when David came home, Michal questions David and says, David, did you forget that you are a king? You lost all your dignity by dancing in the presence of God. And look at what David said. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 22. And I will yet be more wild than thus and will be base in mine own sight and of the maid servants which thou hast spoken of, of them shall I be had in honor. David said, I will be more undignified than this. For me, I rever God much more than my own prestige and status. David said, I don't consider myself as a great king because I am serving and praising a great God who is the king of kings and lord of lords. David had the spirit of humility. And that is the reason God said, David is a man after my own heart. And remember, dear brother and sister, if you and I have to be a man and a woman after God's own heart, we should have the spirit of humility. Because Bible says that humility always comes before honor. And the Bible also says that God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. The fifth point that we need to remember from David's life is David was humble. David was humble. Even though God exalted him to the highest position, he always remained humble in his heart. He always remained thankful to God. He always praised God all through his life, all the days of his life. There is one dark chapter in David's life. Even though David was a man after God's own heart, there was an instance in David's life when he sinned against God. When David saw Uriah's wife Bathsheba, he brought her to his palace, took her as his wife, and he killed her husband Uriah in the battle. David became an adulterer and he also became a murderer. And then God sent Nathan the prophet to go and tell this to King David that he has sinned against the Lord. Yes, the Bible says that God is not a respecter of persons. Even if you are a king, even though you have a PhD degree, even though you are not an educated person, it doesn't matter to God. 
if you commit sin in your life you are definitely falling short of the glory of god and you are definitely wrong in the sight of god when david committed sin with bathsheba god sends prophet nathan when prophet nathan went and questioned david about the sin he has committed look at david's response second samuel chapter 12 verse 13 and david said unto nathan i have sinned against the lord and nathan said unto david the lord also hath put away thy sin thou shall not die immediately david confessed his sin in the presence of god if you and i were in david's place how would we react if anybody else is in david's place they would surely be angry and they might even order the soldiers to kill nathan because he has pinpointed the king and his mistake but david immediately confessed his sin and he said i have sinned against the lord in psalm chapter 51 we see that david has written an entire psalm asking for god's forgiveness for his grace and for his presence psalm 51 verse 9 hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities verse 10 create in me a clean heart o god and renew a right spirit within me 11th verse cast me not away from thy presence take not thy holy spirit from me david realized that his sin will take away god's spirit from him and he knew that god's spirit is all he needs and that's why he is pleading for god's mercy pleading for god's forgiveness pleading for god's grace in his life and david also realized that he has lost the joy of salvation in verse 12 he says restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit if david has committed a sin he can go drink some wine and forget about the sin he has committed he can go enjoy his life somehow and try to get back that joy but david realized that he can get the joy of his salvation he can restore that joy of salvation only when he asks for god's forgiveness that's why david went wept in the presence of god humbled himself confessed his sin pleaded for god's forgiveness and that's the reason god forgave david and god blessed him one more time there will be surely instances in our life when we also commit sin when we go against the will of god when we miss the mark in our life but what are we doing when we are faced with circumstances there are so many people who try to drift away from god they try to run away from god like how cain did when cain killed his brother abel god said where is your brother cain responded in a reckless manner and that's the reason we see in the bible that cain was cursed by god he became the first murderer in the bible The first person who is born on this entire earth was cursed by God. Why? Cain refused to ask for God's forgiveness. He tried to cover up his sin. He tried to conceal his sin. That's why in the Bible we see in Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. When you confess when you forsake your sins when you leave those ways when you leave those ungodly and sinful ways you will surely find mercy in the sight of god the sixth point that we need to observe from david's life which made him as a man after god's own heart is this when david sinned against the lord he confessed asked for god's forgiveness and set things right with god after prophet samuel went and anointed david as the king over israelites Saul came to know about this. Saul was jealous of David. There were so many instances in the Bible where we see that Saul tried to kill David. He was after him. Saul was after David day after day. There were few instances in the Bible where we see that God gave Saul into David's hand. David got an opportunity to kill King Saul who was trying to kill him for a long time who was troubling him so much but look at what David said 1 Samuel chapter 26 verses 9 through 11 and David said to Abishai destroy him not for who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless David said furthermore as the Lord liveth the Lord shall smite him or his day shall come to die or he shall descend into battle and perish the Lord forbid that I should stretch forth my hand against the Lord's anointed when David had an opportunity to kill King Saul who was David's enemy who has been troubling David so much who has been so ungrateful to King David yet David did not utilize that opportunity to take revenge he said vengeance is God's Let God take revenge. I don't want to touch God's anointed. We see that David was a man of peace. 
the bible says blessed are the peacemakers for they are sons of god for all the trouble that king saul caused david david depended on the lord and he said let god fight the battle for me i don't want to take revenge i don't want to kill the lord's anointed david did not take revenge on god's anointed this is the seventh point there are much more to meditate on david's life but these are the seven points that we can remember which made david as a man after god's own heart if you and i can walk in god's ways if you and i honor god in our life if we understand god's will and fulfill his will in our lives i'm sure god will give a testimony about us one day that we are also after his own heart may the lord give us that grace to please him to honor him and to glorify him through our lives let's say a quick word of prayer Our dear loving heavenly father we want to thank you and bless your name lord thank you for reminding us from david's life about all the qualities and the characteristics that he had which made him as a man after your own heart when david was faced with challenges he lived with courage lord even as we face battles in life even as we are faced with difficulties in life give us the courage give us that big mountain moving faith and help us to trust in you always lord because you are our helper when you are our helper we need not be afraid i pray for all my dear brothers and sisters who are watching this program lord i pray that you might take away all the fear that is in their hearts and that they might have confidence on you lord because we are serving a big and a great god lord help us to be humble help us to honor you help us to be thankful lord for all the blessings that you have given us in our lives and lord i pray that you might give us the grace to depend on you each and every day in our lives to get strength from you to get guidance from you and when things go wrong and when we sin against you lord i pray that you might give us those hearts which come and seek for your forgiveness and seek for your mercy and grace and that we might set things right with you and again continue our walk with you lord i pray for all those who are watching this program pray for all their specific prayer requests and needs lord meet all their needs in the riches of your glory be jehovah jireh be our healer jehovah rafa o oh lord be our peace be our victory lord in every single aspect of our lives help us to please you honor you and to glorify you we give you all the glory honor and praise in jesus most precious and wonderful name i pray amen god bless you thank you for watching the spiritual message Don't forget to subscribe to Young Holy Team YouTube channel. You can share this message to your family and friends so that they also can be blessed. God bless you all and may God bless our India.